Hello, my name is Dr. Priya Vijay Vergia and I'm from the Division of Gastroenterology. I'm here today to discuss our recent article in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled COL1A1 Mutations Presenting as Descending Perineum Syndrome in a Young Patient with Hypermobility Syndrome. This paper outlines the unique finding that young females who present with descending perineum syndrome without a previous history of vaginal deliveries should be screened for collagen disorders. Let's first start by discussing what descending perineum syndrome is. Descending perineum syndrome is excess laxity of the pelvic floor, which presents initially as constipation, typically refractory to laxatives or promotility agents. Over time, however, that excessive stretch of the pelvic floor may result in stretching and damage to the pudendal nerve, resulting in subsequent fecal incontinence due to anal sphincter denervation. Now this is typically seen in an older woman after several traumatic vaginal deliveries. However, in this paper, we present a case of a 22-year-old female without any such risk factors, who was found on physical exam to have greater than four centimeters of perineal descent, which is diagnostic for descending perineum syndrome. Because our patient did not have any such risk factors for descending perineum syndrome, we were concerned that she did have a collagen defect. Collagen is essentially the manifold or the scaffolding of the human body and is present in skin, bones, and even the vasculature. Weakness in collagen results in hypermobility and hyperelasticity. One can screen for collagen disorder with a very simple physical exam by evaluating for something called the Baten criteria which is a nine-point scale that evaluates skin and joint laxity. For example, a figure in the paper shows that the patient is able to place both palms of her hands fully on the floor without bending her knees. The patient fortunately had undergone consumer-directed gene testing elsewhere, but no definitive diagnosis was proposed on the report. However, we proceeded to review over 600,000 genetic variations assayed to determine if she had any findings suggestive of a traditional collagen disorder, such as osteogenesis imperfecta or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Although she did not have a well-recognized collagen disorder, we did find two significant abnormalities in her collagen gene. As seen on the figure, normal collagen synthesis is demonstrated on the left side. The collagen fibrils are able to lay flat and form a very strong helical structure. In our patient, represented on the right side of the figure, the collagen fibers are not able to form that strong normal structure, resulting in her pelvic floor laxity. Identifying the subgroup of patients is essential, as certain collagen disorders can have complications such as rectal mucosal or vaginal prolapse. Additionally, these patients have less success with the traditional treatment of biofeedback therapy for descending perineum syndrome and may require colorectal surgery, which comes with the additional risk of poor healing and stoma prolapse secondary to the collagen disorders. In summary, an unusual physical exam finding, particularly in a young patient, should trigger a more in-depth search, which includes underlying genetic disorders. As more people seem to be undergoing consumer-directed genetic testing, we can inquire whether such data are available. Given that the report is not usually sufficient uh, to inform us regarding any such rare genetic disorders, we need to take the opportunity to mine that database to explore any rare genetic variants that are likely responsible for the clinical presentation, which may not have been identified earlier. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. 
This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.